I guess this video is a little bit late for Halloween, but that's okay because for some reason my viewer base is obsessed with drinking blood. I get asked about it every single day. I don't know if they just have an affinity for certain bodily fluids. Maybe we should have discussed that in the No Nut November video. Outside of vampires, the most famous consumption of blood is probably the Maasai tribe in Africa. They prize the blood and milk of their cattle as well as the cows themselves. In Maasai culture, the size of your herd indicates your status in the community. Uh, so accumulating animals instead of consuming them is common practice. This is why milk plays a huge role in a traditional Maasai diet. In some part, in almost every single meal, whether it be soured milk or butter. They aren't complete carnivores though. Uh, what most people fail to mention is that the Maasai also eat tubers, honey, and forest plants. So by harvesting milk and blood from the animal, the Maasai tribe are able to keep their herd size larger, important to their cultural beliefs, but it also makes sense in the context of famine. Having a steadily available food source of blood and milk is better for survival than going all in on a beef barbecue. We know that most tribes and groups of people did not drink blood for one reason or another. A fisherman tribe, for instance, or even one that hunts smaller animals. But what if you did hunt the larger ruminant animals you wanted, say a bison or caribou? Yes, there might be a pool of blood where you killed the animal, where you cut open the animal, but even so, the blood would not have been drank by everyone in the tribe. It would also be very difficult to gather. It's not like the Maasai where they have a controlled bleeding of the animal and normally the animal is bleeding all over the place as you were hunting it or killing it. Plus, blood coagulates very quickly, making it even more difficult to store for later consumption. Uh, here I have some blood and this one on the left, it has like a gelatinous mass of, you know, the blood protein and, and the plasma is on the outside. It's just completely separated. In this one, I added some vinegar to it and that prevented some coagulation. But as you guys could see, there's still this jello blob of blood in the middle of the jar. Uh, I had to go down to a live kill market to get this. I had to buy the whole goat just to get the blood. And this is all of the blood from one entire goat that we controlled the bleeding of. And I don't know how you would prevent coagulation. Maybe if you just strained out the fibrin using a mesh strainer when you killed the animal, but our indigenous ancestors didn't have mesh strainers. This makes it very unrealistic uh, to be consuming blood. Uh, the Maasai tribe did, you know, stir it as it came out of the animal. Uh, and they had clay pottery, so, you know, logistically speaking, it might be possible, but definitely a rare occurrence in humans in our natural environment. And this is why blood is so hard to access now. Uh, you'd have to purchase it directly from the slaughterhouse. It's illegal to sell in most states due to regulation concerns, uh, mainly for waterborne illnesses. And it's like an extra step in the slaughtering process. Uh, normally they would just kill the animal and bleed it out on the floor. Now they'd have to gather the blood, maintain that. It's just not worth it for most slaughterhouses. Uh, from a nutritional perspective, blood is almost entirely protein. Uh, so it contains a large amount of the water soluble B vitamins, probably has some vitamin C when fresh, uh, is an excellent source of sodium, but not so much any other minerals. Blood is incredibly high in iron uh, and it has some copper as well but no significant amounts of the other elements. Uh, there's some cholesterol, and we know cholesterol is needed for many metabolic functions, uh, especially the absorption of vitamin D3. So on paper, I like blood for two reasons. One is that it has readily available B vitamins, just like milk does. It has a high bioavailability because it is a liquid, high amount of amino acids, very good for methylation. Uh, if you had a headache and drank blood, or milk for that matter, it would probably be gone in minutes due to the antioxidant benefits of these foods. Two is that blood is perfect for someone who has anemia. Obviously it has a ridiculous amount of iron, but it also has copper, which is needed to absorb iron in the body. Uh, some people might think that blood has adrenaline, uh, but the half-life of adrenaline is only a few minutes. And even if you did drink blood, 
stray from an animal full of adrenaline. It doesn't get absorbed by consumption. Uh, just because you're putting something in your body doesn't mean you digest it or absorb it. Uh, you would have to physically inject adrenaline into your veins to feel the effects. Any benefits people see from drinking blood would be from easily available B vitamins and the high iron content. Uh, most notably, the high bioavailability of the amino acids in the blood. Uh, so we could, I mean, we could try this. I'm not too enthusiastic about this because uh, this is mostly vinegar and it's still coagulated. Oh man, it's, it's like all vinegar. It's a, I, I didn't put that much vinegar in here. Uh, this is an organic red wine vinegar. Uh, pretty good taste, but you know, I put like three tablespoons in here. But as I just showed you guys, there's like a, a, a jello, a jello mess of blood in here. So I don't know if I'd be like drinking the plasma and not having the blood, but like, you know, the, the Maasai would eat this, like this blood mass too. They would eat that. And you now this doesn't really taste that bad. You know, you could, uh, let me just get a piece of it. Like you could eat this. I mean, it tastes a little bit like vinegar, and then on the end, I get that really, really metallic, irony copper taste. Like, you can really taste the iron and the copper in this blood. And this is super fresh. You know, this animal uh, was literally slaughtered yesterday, so this blood doesn't have that much flavor to it. But, but yeah, the vinegar is really overpowering in here. Not really much to talk about from a flavor standpoint. Slightly metallic, as I said. Uh, do I see this as something that's very hydrating? No. Uh, you would take a few sips of this and you would not want any more of this. Maybe if you were deficient in iron or anemic, you know, you would start chugging this and really crave it. Uh, from a hydration perspective, uh, I've tried a Maasai diet of blood and milk for a little while. Uh, it's just not enough to hydrate yourself. I still needed to drink water. Uh, mainly because, you know, when I drank the blood, uh, I just didn't really want to drink that much of it. And when I drank the milk, you know, your body has to process all of the other nutrients in the milk. Milk is very high in calcium. Uh, so depending on your individual genetic capacity to tolerate milk and blood, you might need to drink water. You might not need to drink water. Uh, if you're really adept at handling lactose, if you have a very active lactase gene, you might be able to hydrate on just blood and milk, but by no means should you think uh, it's superior to do so. Is it more natural? I wouldn't say that you know blood or milk has any less contaminants than our modern water supply, that it's any different for you, and it's definitely more stress on the kidneys, on the body, to consistently process nutrients, minerals, and elements. And then if you're one of those people that, you know, don't really have to drink that much fluid on a daily basis, that's a whole different story. And as we went over from the nutrient perspective, it's just iron and copper. Uh, you know, there's no significant fat soluble vitamin content here. Uh, although the protein, B vitamins, iron and copper are definitely, you know, a welcome addition to any diet. Uh, so I guess that's it. Uh, if you guys could please like the video, you know, getting my hands on this blood and and dressing up. Hey, it's a little bit of work here and there. I spent like 12 bucks on this vampire cape and uh, I'm getting flashbacks from my bartending days because this is actually my my bartending uniform that I, I had in a couple places. Uh, for those of you guys asking like can we get blood on Frankie's free range meat? Uh, maybe in the future. Uh, the more support we get from you guys, the more inclined we are to to go out and seek those things. But right now, the amount of people asking for blood and how difficult it is for us to get it it doesn't make sense. You know, not, not that many people want it. Uh, the, the price we'd have to charge to get it is, is astronomical. Uh, so j just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, that being said, we do have a bunch of nutrient-dense animal foods available on Frankie's Free Range Meat that are a much better addition to your diet than drinking blood from a vitamin perspective. Uh, if you guys could please subscribe if you haven't, uh, definitely hit that bell icon and above all, please share the video. Uh, if you guys would like to support me further, you can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thanks again for joining me, guys. If you'd like to reach out to me for consultations, send me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com. I know I said I was selling a carnivore uh, doo-doo the other day for you vegans, 
Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have any carnivore blood for you guys, uh, though it would make you a lot healthier.